So, Tom, thank you for doing the podcast. You're welcome. So, you're known in many circles as Britain's most generous tycoon. <laughs> um, so, why do you think you're known that way? Um, well, I'm not quite sure, but um, I suppose um, when I sold my first business 20 years ago, 20 years ago now, it makes me feel old, <laughs> um, I was only 37. And um, so I had made more money than I'd ever thought I would make. And I'd, I was trying to work out what to do. And um, my wife and myself made a few big decisions. So the first decision was we still wanted to be in business. I really enjoy business and making money. Mm. But we decided that as a family, we, we didn't need any more money. And um, so we decided to set up a, fo a foundation. And basically, through listening and learning and being educated by a whole bunch of people, I was very inspired by Andrew Carnegie, mm. who made the most of his fortune while he was still alive. And I was really taken by that. And therefore, we decided to try and do something with our money while we're still alive. So maybe that's why. Yeah. So when you say do something with your money, you mean philanthropy and yeah. helping other people and setting up foundations and education and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and... Was that a decision that happened once you had, let's be honest, a barrel load of money from a sale? Or was it something you'd been thinking before that? Yeah, well, I mean, I was brought up in a very small village in Scotland called New Cumnock, which was a mining village. So um, my dad was a local grocer, um, but 85% of the people who, who, who worked there worked down the pit. Yeah. And, but... In 1984, which seems a long time ago to somebody like you. Um, <laughs> that was five, yeah. <laughs> um, the miners' strike came and the mines never reopened. So a small community like Newcomna was ripped apart. Mm. And um, my dad lost his business. Yeah. Now, at the time, we thought that was terrible. And it was terrible. But looking back and trying to join the dots, I think it was Steve Jobs said, you know, you can't join the dots looking forward, mm. only looking back. Um, it it kind of got me to um, start my own business. Yeah. And um, during that time, you know, my, my dad was and is my hero. So I saw him going through and think he was a failure. And, and I guess seeing a, a community where I was brought up and it was very important to me, the heart being ripped out of it, it kind of affected me. I didn't mm. know it at the time, but looking back, I, I guess that's one of the reasons that I want to, to do something with yeah. my money, mm. um, something positive. Yeah. And do you think that desire, that void in your life, I suppose, of seeing that hardship was part of the driver for you going and wanting to make money? Yeah. I mean, I... It's, it's one of the questions which we ask because in our foundation, one of the things we want to do is to encourage more entrepreneurs. We want to get more entrepreneurs starting and scaling their businesses. Mm. That's the real passion of ours. Um, and people also always ask us, nature or nurture? Are entrepreneurs born or made? You know. I've got a very clear view on that. Do you, right? Way. Okay, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be interested in your point of yeah. view. I mean, I, my... My view is that there are natural born sportsmen, you know, David Beckham in football, right? So he was born good, but with coaching and the right mentors, he became a great player. Mm. And I think the same for entrepreneurs. There are some things which people are naturally born, mm -hmm. but all of us need the help of a mentor yeah. and a coach and a teacher, someone who take an interest mm. in us. And that will help us become a better yeah. entrepreneur or sportsman or mm. whatever walk of life. What, what do you think? Uh, well, I'm waiting for a doctor or a scientist who analyzes chromosomes to say, see that little genetic piece of code there? That's the born <laughs> entrepreneur chromosome. <laughs> so like, I think when I was younger, I used to believe that I couldn't do X right. because I compare myself to someone who looked naturally gifted and I would say, well, they're naturally talented and I'm not, therefore I can't. And I would, so, so I would quite um, 
I would deposition myself against them and talk myself out of trying things. Right. And so it didn't really serve me to think that people were born gifted because then I assumed that I wasn't. Right. Um, but, you know, like, as you were raised by your dad who became your hero and you worked for him and you're in yep. the grocery shop and you're selling shoes, you know, maybe those selling skills developed you into a definitely an entrepreneur. So I think I was extreme you have to be born gifted and therefore i'm not and then i read all the books like malcolm gladwell's and matthew syed who i've interviewed on the podcast yeah about how well actually it's a ten thousand hour rule and you can learn it all so i think i went that way okay and it's actually you can learn it all because i do believe you can learn everything to be an entrepreneur okay. marketing sales mindset all of that kind of stuff but then i had kids Right. And it was like their personalities were already born within them before they even started talking. And, you know, I've, I've got three kids and they're all very different. Mm. And up, you wonder why. Brought up in the same exactly. way. Exactly. Um, so, so maybe the reality is a bit in the middle. It is. Mm. It is. I think we can agree on that one. But I wouldn't yeah. want to put anybody no, off. No, and that's the thing, isn't it? Um, You're not born an entrepreneur. You're not supposed to be no, one. No. Who says? Yeah, who says? Yeah. But there are a couple of things in entrepreneurs that I always see in their eyes, look into my eyes. Do I have that in my <laughs> eyes? <laughs> I can sense it. And um, which is hard to put in if the desire and the attitude, mm. these are hard things to teach. Yeah. Everything else, sure. But those things maybe got to be there. Mm. And it's funny because talking about desire and attitude, like like you, my dad is my hero. He, re he, had, he had pubs. Right. Now, my dad was like, he, he made millions, lost millions. Right. Um, they made a bit and lost a bit. My dad's biggest skill was starting up. He didn't know it at the time. Okay. But he could take over a pub that was overrun and like the worst pub in the worst town. And he had the skill of getting everyone out and putting a nice restaurant in and, and, and elevating it, which was, was something I couldn't yeah. do. Um, and he always used to take me around all the auctions. He always used to have big wads of cash in his hand. <laughs> and like, I looked up to him and wanted to have my own business. Right. Um, and then when I went to school and university, I kind of lost that yeah. track. Um, and it wasn't again until I was 25 or 26 that I sort of tried to re have that reborn in myself. Yes. But it, fought, it took me to get in a lot of debt and be really skint to start. Okay. So you could you don't say, need to do it that way. No, no, I like my, <laughs> absolutely. And we wouldn't yeah. recommend it, would we? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, but what I was going to say is like that getting to the point of the lowest low in the debt for me then forced me to actually go, wait a minute, you've got to do something with your life. Yeah. And so in some regards, it was a blessing. Okay. Yeah. But And you don't know these things until you look no, back on them. You no, don't know no. at the time. No, no, absolutely yeah. right. Okay. And, that's, and that's why one of our, and our foundation is is we really believe people should learn by doing. Mm. So just, you know, because I get these entrepreneurs coming with beautiful spreadsheets, they've spent all their time, and I said, well, have you spoken to a customer? Yeah. Oh, oh no, I've been yeah. doing this. Yeah. yeah. Have you sold a product yet? Go and, go and speak to the customer. Yeah. <coughs> but, you know, mm. learn by doing. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but you've learned something. Mm. Yeah. Don't do it that way. So... I think you're quite a unique person. Well, you are in many ways, but in one way I, I feel that you're really unique is, you know, you're, you're in what you might call traditional education with your foundation, with your, um, you know, the, the courses, the colleges that you've set up yourself yep. in Scotland. And you're an on the ground entrepreneur who's done it for real. So if I could ask you, what are the differences between what you learn in the classroom and the MBA, which do have value in many regards, yeah. but also then on the street growing up, in yeah. grocery stores and shoe shops selling? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, again, it's a mixture. Um, I really value um, learning from practitioners. So what do I mean? So I mean, if, if, if we're going to talk about being an entrepreneur, I want to hear from an entrepreneur, mm. which is what your podcast's about. Yeah. And that's why I like it. Mm. But, you know, um, I've, I've never did an MBA um, and I don't think I've missed out. No. Now, we do employ some people with MBAs, which is fine. But if that's all they've got, mm, no. They've got to have got their hands dirty. Mm. And it's a bit like in our foundation. We're still looking for entrepreneurs to back. But, you know, one of the best entrepreneurs I've come across is a guy called David Duke, who's, who was homeless 
found himself homeless, but he used um, football to, to make his way out of his tough reality. Yeah. And therefore, he then used that and he's created this brilliant um, social business to help others get themselves out of homelessness and how they find themselves. But what I would say is who is best to write a government policy in homelessness? Is it the practitioner who's been through this? Mm. Or is it the government minister who's benefited from probably a great education and never been homeless for one minute? Mm. Uh, you can see where I'm leaning. Yeah. Now, it's got to be a mixture of both, mm. but I'm listening to the person who's been through it, yeah. the practitioner. Mm. So I, that's why I really believe learn by doing. Mm. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. You know? Mm. So maybe a bit like you, every business plan that comes to me is a graph left to right, upward only, and three years we're all going to be millionaires. Yeah, not this. And, it, <laughs> and not one of these business plans ever works like that. Mm. You know, an entrepreneur's journey is up, down, backwards, downwards, yeah. up. Yeah. You know, and, and this is something that on a spreadsheet, it all works. Mm. It's beautiful. This line just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't happen that way. No. It doesn't happen that way. And that's mm. why if you're a practitioner, if you've actually tried it, if you've been there, mm. then you know these things. Yeah. But, you know, then people say, well, Tom, if I came to you with a sales line that went up, down, round, and I was going to be busting, you know, you wouldn't back me. Mm. And I said, mm, maybe. Try me. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So is that what you're trying to bring into your more structured traditional education through your foundation? A bit of, look, I've experienced it. I've been on the ground. Yeah. And maybe make it a little bit more applicable. And by the way, I'm not criticising anyone or, or any f method of education because sure. I've retrospectively gone back and learned stuff you learn on MBAs okay. and benefited from it after I started my yeah. business. But that, that's what I'm saying. It's a mixture. Mm. Um, but what... What we're trying to do is to give practical yeah. advice. Stress tested in the real world. From people who've been there, did it, done it. Mm. And, you know, entrepreneurs, we all love to talk about our successes, but the best learning is through their failures. Mm. And getting people to talk about their failures, that's where it really happens. Mm. That's where the real learning comes. Right. So I will move my <laughs> next question away. And my next question is, can you share some of your failures? Sure. You know, during the financial crisis, which was 10 years ago, you know, we were um, heavily invested. We were um, over-invested and we didn't see it coming. I mean, we didn't, mm. you know, things had been going so well. I don't think anyone saw it coming, did but they? No, quite a lot of people did. And I've, I have become an anorak. I've read every book on yeah. the financial crisis to try and educate myself. Mm. So it was my fault. I didn't see it coming, yeah. um, and we lost a great deal of money. Mm. But that really tested the metal of me, of my team, and the learning we had through it has stood us in better stead to carry out our business now. Mm. Um, but you know those were difficult times. Mm. But and now when we when we back because our in our money-making side, I've got two sides. We, we make money and we give it away through our foundation. But in the money-making side, I'm looking for an entrepreneur and I'll say, tell me about your failure. And if they say, well, I haven't had any, I'll say, well, go and have some and then come back. <laughs> yeah, go and waste them out there. Because you're either a liar <laughs> yeah. or you're not willing to share. Yeah. Because I've never met an entrepreneur who hasn't had a failure. Mm. Maybe they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. But... All of us have had failures, mm. you know, and we're mm. going to continue to have failures. Yeah. And it's how we deal with failure, not how we deal with success, that ultimately, mm. in my opinion, marks us out. Yeah. So other than being overinvested and not seeing it coming, what other mistakes do you think you made leading up to the big crash? Yeah, so we, we, we lost our focus. We thought we had the Midas touch oh, this will work, this will. And we were in all sorts of different businesses we, we didn't understand. Mm. And we weren't getting into the weeds. Yeah. So we didn't stick to our knitting. Right, yeah. 
Um, I like that phrase. I've never heard it said like that. <laughs> Stick to our knitting. <laughs> and um, yeah. Mm. So you, got, you just got distracted thinking you could do things that were out of your remit. Yeah. Yeah. My fault. I'm the leader. Mm. I'm my fault. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of have to be careful about that, don't you? Because when you get success, you can start to think that you can oh, yeah. be successful in other areas. Well, you know, and, and, and you can, mm. but there's nothing beats the homework, the graft, yeah. getting into the weeds, mm. absolutely understanding it. Yeah. But, but we weren't doing that. No. And I think a lot of people think that things are um, transmutable that aren't necessarily... Like, for example, there are many great celebrity chefs but, you know, 10 years later, and when they've started their restaurant, a Only lot of them restaurant. haven't still got it. It's a completely different thing, even though you think it's the same. Yeah, completely different. Mm. Now, that's not to say a celebrity chef can't yeah. run a restaurant. It's just a different thing. A different thing. Yeah. And you've got to understand yeah. it. And I, um, I, I read Gordon Ramsay's books. Um, yeah, and so I'm, I, I, like, I just, I mean, look, I love an entrepreneur like you. I try and read up on all of them. And he had his wife's um, father as a business partner who was more experienced in business. And I thought yeah. that was smart. I'll be the chef, he'll be the businessman, and then over time... It didn't work out that way. Well, not always, <laughs> but then, like you said, we've all had failures, and it, and it worked yeah. for, for a while. And, you know, one, one of the key things that we, that we teach entrepreneurs is it's okay to fail. Mm. So as long as you fail quick, you fail cheap. <laughs> I like it, yeah. And then you get back on the bus. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. Because you've just learned something. Mm. Yeah. And that will stand you in good stead next mm. time round. And maybe to add to that, fail with some humility so yeah. that people will back you next time. There's nothing like losing money to make you humble. Yeah, 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 true. And then going back again to this point, because I think this is a really interesting um, thing that people don't talk about a lot. So you've talked about some of the things that maybe you did wrong leading to the recession. Now, yeah. what did you learn that prepares you well for the next one? Yeah, so... The focus and doing your homework, mm. you know. So if we're going into a sector, our investment philosophy is very much backing the entrepreneur. Yeah. We're not, we're kind of sector agnostic. So we're, we're trying to work out you. Mm. Are you backable? Yeah. Are you honourable? Are you honest? Do you have the desire? Mm. Um, are you someone, what's your life experience that gets yeah. you to this point? You know, so that's our homework. Right. But but then you'll say, right, well, look, I'm I'm building a rocket ship. All right, okay. So we like you. You're building a rocket ship. So what do we think of rocket ships? You know, mm. do the homework. Yeah. Get into the weeds. Mm. But it's founder first for us. Right. Okay. So honourable, honest, desire. Any other things you're looking for in a founder? Yes. Yeah, I mean the the sheer tenacity because mm. it ain't easy. Mm. It ain't easy, is it? No. no. <laughs> some, some people make it look easy. Yeah. But it ain't. Um, I would add one thing to that. It's not easy compared to what you compare it to. But if you compare it to the developing world and oh. being starving and everything else, sometimes Goodness. I think people are a bit serious, myself included. Right. You know, like our, our problems are first world problems. Oh, yeah. So I think when you get stuck, it's just good to remember that. And um, when it works, it's the best feeling in the world. Mm. You know, creating a team runabout. Yeah. You. Taking on the world, yeah. succeeding, wow. And sharing the su success with your team. It's brilliant. Mm. It's the best feeling. Mm. Okay, so there were a few things you said right at the start, which are in my mind, I was like, I love that, I want to talk about that. Okay. And one of them was, you got to a point where you said, I don't need any more money. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to give this a bit of context. So apparently there's all these American studies that have been done that says once you get to $70,000, you know, the happiness above that is, is kind of um, marginal or minimal. Right. I don't agree with that because no. I don't think $70,000 is enough to live. Okay. And it's £35,000 to put my two kids through private school. <laughs> so how much money for you was enough? Oh, I, I can't put a number on it. Um, more than $70,000 a yeah. year? <laughs> yeah, much more. I guess. But, you know, 20 years ago, I mean, it's public record, you, you know, we sold the business for 290 million. Mm. So that was enough. Yeah. Well, had it been enough before that sale? I hadn't thought about it. No. But, and I went to see, because I'd become really interested in Andrew Carnegie, who was a Scotsman, left Scot Scotland when he was nine years old. Mm. Um, because his mum and dad were in poverty. They couldn't make ends meet yeah. in Dunfermline. 
and they jumped on a ship, ended up in Pittsburgh in America. And Carnegie, very long story short, founded US Steel, became the richest man in the world. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I went and I knocked on the door of the president of the Carnegie Corporation of New York. You know, I just knocked on the door. And I said, is the president in? And they said, well, who are you? And I said, well, I'm Tom Hunter from Scotland. I've, I've got a story. And, and so went, well, you've got a story, but you don't have an appointment. I said, no, <laughs> but I can wait. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't keep me waiting too long. And, and the president's name still is Vartan Gregorian. And a very long story short, he became my philanthropic mentor mm -hmm. just because I knocked on his door and he's yeah. one of our trustees. Mm. And, and he basically said, OK, Tom, I've listened to your story. And he said, the first thing is that amount of money sh shouldn't really be in one person's hand. Mm. I said, well, you're mad. You know, I've worked 18 hours a day, seven days a week, 14 years to, to do this. Mm. And you've got to go and find your purpose. Mm. So it's all about confusing. You know, I thought, well, perhaps just to make more money. Mm. But I had... I'd satisfied all my material goals. And listen, it's okay having material mm. goals. You know, My first material goal was a Porsche 911 Guards Red nine, um, Carrera. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fine. Mm. But then you can only drive one car at a time. Mm. And then, you know, there's a house and a boat and all the rest of it. Whatever it is, and it's each individual's different, that's, that's fine. Mm. But after you've did all that, then what? Yeah. And... Therefore, the purpose then I found was our foundation mm. and trying to, trying to make a positive difference. Yeah. So we still make money. I still love business. I still like the challenge of making money, but the money flows to our foundation. Mm. Okay, great. So um, I've got some good friends who've sold businesses for big lumps of money like yourself. And I'm um, talking to them. There seems to be like a mixed reaction to how they sold it. So I'm good friends with um, Neville Wright who um, created Kitty Care and sold it. Yep. And he said after he sold it, he felt awful and it was one of the worst days of his life. And he didn't expect to feel like that. Yep. Um, and then Morrison's run it into the ground and blah, 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 which, yep. you know. Um, how did you feel when you sold? Yeah, well, I mean, it had been my baby, you know, and the people I worked with were my friends and this team and we were successful and that we were taking on the world and we started you know from nothing mm. and we built Europe's biggest independent sports retailer I mean it was amazing it, it, it was my life mm. and um, so yeah um, it, and we'd also created a lot of jobs in my local community in Scotland mm. which I kind of knew were going to disappear right so yeah it was very very mixed feeling mm. on the one hand I genuinely felt I had taken it as far as I could take it. Because remember, this, the skills an entrepreneur had of starting a business in the back of a van and, and running it when it's seven and a half thousand people. And, you know, that would be quite rare to have those skills. Mm. And I, I, was, I was challenged in that I thought I'd taken it as far as I could. Yeah. And I, I genuinely believed that. Mm. And um, therefore, I knew it was right to sell it, but I knew I was maybe letting people down. So, yeah, very mixed mm. feelings. And was it a strategic thing, a long way out, going to build this business to sell? or did no, you? I, no, I never thought about it. No? No. Did you just get a random offer one day, or did you think one day, I can't take this anymore, as no. in take it further? No. The phone went, and it was my biggest competitor, right? which was Dave Whelan, yeah. at JJB. And he said, Tom, are you thinking of selling? And I said, I mean, we were big competitors. Mm. And I, said, <laughs> I can't imagine what you first said. And yeah. I said, no, I'll, I'll buy you. You're not buying yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And he went, think about it. He, he had gone public. He was smaller than me, but, yeah. he, you know, he had the funds. Mm. And it didn't take me long, actually, to go from never having thought of it to going, no, no, I'll buy you, you know. Yeah. You would not buy yeah. me. Um, to going, well, maybe. Because then the possibilities began to... Well, what could I do, you know? Mm. And how that sales process, which is often very messy for a business, isn't it? Because you still got to sell stuff and yeah. deliver and set it, up for it, sale. It didn't take that long. Really? Dave was very good, um, very honourable. Yeah. And he got on with it, you know? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And so what is not long? Is it? Um, it's maybe a four month period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very quick. Mm. Had, had you, was your business pretty well systemized then? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had a good, good business. Mm. Yeah. Great people. And I guess if your competitor's buying it, he's watched you for decades. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I know a lot of people actually set up a business and their plan is to exit selling to Google or a competitor of theirs yeah. or whatever. We don't really like those businesses no. because, because, you know, who can see that? If that's the that, only outcome. Who, who, who can see that far ahead? You yeah. Know? yeah. Predicting the future is quite difficult. Yeah. And also, like, surely a business should be about creating value. Uh, it should be about making something that matters. Yeah. Um, making a little dent as opposed yeah. to I'm um, just setting this thing up. To flog it in a few years. If it's just about the money, yeah, it's questionable. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, venture philanthropy is this word that yep. sounds like a, um, a hybrid word. Yes. Um, what Definitely. does that mean to you? Because be, you've been called yeah. one. Yeah, so um, I guess when I was searching to see how we would do charity, how we would do philanthropy, what did it all mean? I was trying to educate myself. But, mm. you know, it had been the usual stuff. As, as we were growing the business and my profile got bigger, people would write in, could you help me? Yeah. Help my football team, give me strips, give me this. And, you know, and you always give them something, but yeah. you, you thought, well, were they honest? Was it a scam? Did it do any good? Yeah. But you didn't have time because, mm. you know, we were full on running the business. And therefore, when... Um, we set up the foundation. My dad said to me, because I, I was struggling, saying, right, what, what, what is it? How did I do it? Mm. And he said, so treat it like a business. I said, but it's not a business. He said, treat it like a business. So go and find a chief exec. Go and find the best person you can. Um, probably not from the charitable sector. And you don't sit in your office and wait for people to come to you in your business life. You go and find out, all oh, right, Got to meet them. Let's mm. go. And, you don't. So don't sit in your philanthropy and wait for the begging letters. <laughs> go and decide what you want to do. You do get a lot of them when you set it up, though, don't you? I've got so many of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to stop sending them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was a great piece of advice. Yeah. So we went and found Ewan, who's our chief exec, um, for twenty years now, who was not in the charitable sector. Mm. And we decided what we wanted to do. Yeah. And then we said, okay, so if, if education is one of our things, right, so what is it we want to do and, and how are we going to measure it? And are we going to drip feed the money in against milestones? and it, Just the stuff we would do in our business. Mm. And it made sense because it's the only thing I know. Yeah. And find great people. Mm. Find great entrepreneurs to back who are doing things in, yeah. in a social sense. Mm. It's the same thing. Yeah. Some of the best entrepreneurs I've met are in the charitable sector. Right. Because they've got less resources. Mm. They've got to be more entrepreneurial. Oh, and you're still selling, aren't you? It's not like people yeah. just keep sending you checks in. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. So venture philanthropy then is a, a more venture entrepreneur business backed philanthropic model. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's all I know. Yeah, sure. And bringing that more business focus into philanthropy, as I guess, has helped you grow it. Yeah, you know, and some, some people will say, oh, well, Tom, that's not the way we do it. And, you know, um, I have this kind of saying, which is a little bit arrogant, I know, but it's like, he, he who has the pesos has the say-sos. <laughs> you know? You've got all the phrases. So, we can um, make, so yeah. well, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Then I'll go and back somebody else. Yeah. Okay, so I've um, recently set up my own foundation. Good. And um, like yourself, I'm a, 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 gr- a real student of the masters. Right. Uh, and so I've um, tried to study pretty much every billionaire and successful person that I could. Mm-hmm. And, and I figured, you know, p- people like Bill Gates are uh, a big philanthropist, but probably at a point they got forced into it by society when they became billionaires, etc. And I thought, well, why don't I start when it's in my own narrative yep. where people aren't pushing me to do things? Um, and for me, I really believe that the gift you give people is the knowledge as opposed to the, the money. Um, so my foundation is about helping people educate themselves on money and starting their own enterprises. So in many ways, Great. probably quite similar. So what advice would you give to me as a, a startup foundation? Yeah, so 
um, I think you've learned the first big lesson. It's not just about writing a cheque mm. and cheerio. Yeah. You know, what, what you've been through is invaluable to someone who's at the beginning of mm. that journey. And that knowledge, now it's, it's quite hard, but giving up your time is really important. You know, so I decided, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find a balance of working the foundation and still making money because I mm. enjoy both. Uh, you know, I'm 100% on both just now. So, yeah. um, But if you're really committed to it, I would be seeing how much time you're spending on it mm. and then finding ways of, of leveraging your time. Yeah. Because the knowledge you've got in here is really valuable. Mm. Yeah, and usually in my entrepreneurial life, I'm always in a blooming rush <laughs> and I'm impatient as heck. But I thought, you know what, if I want to try and make a difference in the world, I'm going to do the opposite with my foundation. So all the um, profits from my book money go to the foundation. Great. I've run a few events and all the ticket sales have gone to the foundation. Um, but at the moment, I'm just letting that sit there and thinking, what's the best use of this money? Is it creating some kind of um, educational program which balances this learning versus doing, a bit like your philosophy? Yep. Is it actually getting out in the developed world and digging up, digging in internet connections and reaching people who, because you know, a good couple of people, billion people in the world still haven't got an internet connection. Yep. So it's hard to educate them if they haven't got... So I'm, I'm still, in my mind, not 100% clear on that. And I suppose in the past I'd have beaten myself up for not doing it quick enough, but <laughs> I have to remind myself I'm 39 and yeah. got time. So, I mean, my thoughts on that are, I'm, I, I never tell anybody what they should be doing. That's down to you. Mm. But take the time mm. to find out what's in your heart. Yeah. What, what is passionate to you? You know, mine's entrepreneurs and education. Mm. Mine too. Uh, yeah. But it might not be. Yeah. Um, so, and I would never preach to you to say, oh, you should be doing this. Yeah. You're clever enough to work it out. But I am but asking time in it. with your experience. So what, what I'm telling you is spend the time working out what it, and, and it changes. Mm. Of course it changes. Yeah. You know, mm. as your experience changes, it changes. Yeah. But learn by doing. Mm. Say, well, yeah, I put some money into time and that, that didn't work. Right, great. Mm. You've learned something. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, 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 the one thing I'm clear on is I, I want it to be education based. Okay. So maybe scholarships for people who couldn't normally get the education that sure. they need and support to um, to be able to learn the skills required. That's probably where I'm probably where I'm, I'm mostly focused. But, okay. Um, okay. So I know that um, we're on the clock, and I don't <laughs> want to outstay out, my welcome. Thanks for inviting us to your. Um, beautiful You're place welcome. in London and look at the view and <laughs> I'm really grateful so thank you so what we'll do now is maybe do a bit of a quick fire okay so um, the top entrepreneurial lessons you learned from your dad are so we were in a small community and basically he said Tom these this community pays our wages so we've got to put something back in mm. huge huge lesson mm. you know okay uh, next one then is best advice you've ever received. Wow. Okay. Um, so the best advice I think would be Vartan Gregorian when I was asking him what to do with this wealth and him challenging me to say it's too much for one person to have. Go find your purpose. Mm. Okay. Worst advice you'd ever received. <laughs> Buy a boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amen to that. Um, if you lost it all and had to start again, what would you do? Wow. What would I do? Well, I would need to find some other young entrepreneur to do it with. <laughs> I'm always open for business. <laughs> and then do it together. Yeah. So you would find partnerships and find yeah. hungry entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I mean, what we do is... You know, the pace of change in the world today is so fast. Yeah. You know, we've got this saying, once again, that the pace of change today is the quickest it's ever been, but it's the slowest it'll ever be. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just relentless. And mm. therefore, young people get it yeah. better than older people. Mm. Well, I mean, these, Fact people, of life. these kids on YouTube and podcasts, yeah. you know, it's absolutely killing it. Yeah, they get um, it. a lot to learn from them. So something wrong with the world you'd like to change? Um, 
I guess I would like more practitioners writing and helping shape government policy <laughs> than just policy wonks yeah. who have never policy wonks. Been That's there. another quote we need for you. Been there. So someone who's been homeless helping write the homeless policy. Yeah. Some poor kid who's been in care sorting out the care system. Mm. Use that knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, how did you feel, and just tell us the moment when you discovered you were going to become a sir? Yeah. So um, I was in Dubai um, to make a speech and um, my wife called me. She wasn't with me. Um, you and the Chief Executive Foundation was with me and Marion called to say, Tom, there's a letter here from number 10. And I said, well, open it. She said, well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she said, um, first of all, it's asking, did you not want the knighthood? And I went, what knighthood? And they said, they, they, they sent it to the wrong address. We, right. we had moved home. And it had gone and I'd, I'd obviously never got it, never replied. Mm. So I almost missed it. Wow. So it was like, wow. Um, and luckily, luckily my dad was still alive, mm. 2005. And um, yeah, so we had a nice bottle of wine <laughs> that night. Um, yeah, it was very special. Mm. Was it something you ever thought of or expected? No. No. So it was a great surprise. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Wow, that's exciting. Um, has money made you more or less happy? Yeah. I, I mean, people say, that does money make you happy? So, you know, if you, can, if you can give your kids the best, that makes you happy. Although with her, we've got three children. And one of the things that I listened and learned about was we we decided, my wife and I, that, that we were not going to leave our kids great wealth. Yeah. What is great wealth? I don't know. But, but sitting, having the privilege of sitting with Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, and Warren Buffett said, look, leave your kids enough that they do something, but not too much that they do nothing. Mm. So all of our kids, we've, we've sat with them and said, find your own purpose and we'll back you. Yeah. You know, what's the number? I don't know, it's work in progress. Mm. But um, being able to do that for your kids is great. Yeah. Being able to back entrepreneurs and see them make a difference is great. So I guess there's a certain level that money fulfills the needs. Yeah. And then does money make you happy? I would say yes if you give it away. Mm. Love that. What's it like hanging out with US presidents? <laughs> Well, it's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, listen, we've, we've had the privilege to meet all, all sorts of amazing people mm. along the way. And a bit, a bit like you, I love it. Yeah. You know, I love it. So it's very inspirational. Mm. It's, um, I mean, it's incredibly privileged to do that. Yeah. yeah. And I know it. <laughs> mm. I shared with you before we put the cameras on our discussion around I just love meeting I love meeting people yeah um, and obviously if they've got an interesting story and if it's similar to your interests then that's double exciting but the more doubly excited I'm about meeting someone the more nervous I get as well right I, I just I'm surprised do. yeah I think there's a little bit inside of me that wants to be really liked by everyone <laughs> and what if I'm not do, do you get nervous meeting such amazing people or just excited I don't get nervous no, no. and I think mm. that's just nature mm. It's just your luck. Yeah. Um, I get excited for yeah. sure. And I love it. Mm. But I don't get nervous, no. Mm. I need to get in a bit more in your head sometime <laughs> and work out how, how do that. I don't know how it works. No. 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 But I th I, for me, I think the nervousness is linked to the excitement. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then final one. And I think we're pretty good for time. So um, this podcast is called The Disruptive Entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm getting a few t-shirts made. Just Love it. <laughs> Send me a t-shirt. All right. I will do. Um, what does the word disruptive mean to you? So we want to back disruptors, both in our foundation and in our West Coast Capital money-making side. Yeah. So what it means to us is people who the status quo 
is not acceptable, either because it's unjust in our philanthropy, yeah. or there's a better way. So finding a better way, so people who just see the world as it is and say, no, mm. that's not good enough. Yeah. I'm gonna shape the world a bit differently. I love that. I love it. Yeah. And that would be the perfect end to the podcast, except I have just got to ask one more. <laughs> um, okay. So did it matter to you to become a billionaire? Well, it's only a number. And almost as soon, and I don't know if it ever was, you know, it's a number. And, you know, and who, Wikipedia who says you were, but. You know. But almost whenever it was, I lost a whole chunk of it. Mm. So I probably wasn't there that long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did it matter? It, it, it would matter in that I want to give as much away as possible, you know, invest yeah. in good cause as much as possible. So that's why it would matter. But actually mm. to say, you know, I'm, a, I'm Billy Big Bollocks, you know, <laughs> no. no. No, but but a billionaire must know some stuff that a millionaire doesn't. <laughs> I mean, that could, you know, because take away the number and the word, it's experience, it's progress, it's contribution, it's yeah. employing a lot of people. Yeah. What does a billionaire know that a millionaire doesn't? Mm. That's a great question and I, I can't answer it. And I've never asked it. So <laughs> um, I'll get back to you. That's, that's episode two that we'll do on the 500th. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So Tom, thank you very much. It's been great to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All the best. All right. Yeah. That was brilliant. Thank you. We got a lot in a short Is that all right? amount of time. Yeah. We, oh, well, did look you... at that. You're only five minutes. Ah, sorry about that. <laughs> that was the billionaire question. <laughs> it's yeah. a great question. <laughs>